Hey everyone, Mike with Financeable here, back with another interview question review. If you find these videos helpful, please do subscribe. We have a lot more coming. Let's hop in. To begin with, there are actually two ways to answer this question. There's a shorter three-point answer, and then a much longer answer. We'll go through both here, but we always recommend that you start with the shorter answer, uh, keep it high level, and let the interviewer pull you into the details. Also, the layout and framework we're using here comes from our Walk Me Through an LBO uh, video. If you aren't super familiar with LBOs, I'd probably check that out first before diving into this one. With that, let's just jump in. So the start of an LBO is just the purchase of a business. And the way that we would frame that is we typically would buy a business based on the profit or EBITDA that the business generates, and we would pay a multiple of that profit. In this case, if we have $10 of EBITDA and a 10 times EV to EBITDA multiple, our purchase price would be $100. Purchase price is the first value creation driver. So let's write that down here. And it's really driven by the EBITDA the business generates and the multiple that we pay of that profit. So the, the number of multiples of that profit that we pay to buy the business. Now, if we pay a higher price, that's generally going to be worse for us because we, um, we have to invest more money, and that will ultimately lower our returns, all else equal. Um, and vice versa, if we pay less, we, we typically can put in less money, and we'll generate a higher return for ourselves down the road. Now, if you look at this closely, what you'll notice is, really, this isn't about purchase price, and it's not about EBITDA, it's really about the multiple. The root driver of purchase price when you're buying a business is mul the multiple, because you're not really going to change EBITDA when you buy a business. Um, you may change it after you buy it, but before you buy it, it kind of is what it is. So the real underlying driver of purchase price is the multiple, but we'll come back to that, that kind of more core focus in a sec. With that said, let's move to the next thing, which is just financing the purchase. So typically we would borrow a portion of the purchase price, let's say $50, and then as the private equity fund or financial sponsor, we're responsible for funding the remainder. Let's say it's the other, and that would be the other $50 here. We'll get really good choice there. And the next value driver is what we just saw here, which is the level of debt that we can raise. So we'll call this debt dollars. Um, you also hear this called leverage or leverage levels, uh, it's just synonymous with debt. And the short story here is, let's imagine that if I, um, if I have a $100 purchase and I could, instead of borrowing 50, I could borrow 80. The short story here is I have to put up less money. So if we borrowed 80, I'd only have to put up $20 instead of 50 and that would ultimately enhance my returns because my returns would be assessed relative to an initial investment that was much smaller. So that's how debt can create value, uh, by lowering the dollars that we need to put into a particular LBO transaction. Now let's move to step three, which is our cash flows. So step three, uh, the business generates cash flows, let's say $20 of cash flow. Um, that allows us to pay down our debt, as a quick recap from our prior video, uh, the walk me through an LBO, we talked about how if you generate more cash, you can pay down debt, which increases your returns. What we didn't talk about was that this is really a function of two things. It's the cash flows of the business on an underlying basis, and then the interest that we have to pay as a result of the borrowing that we made. So really, we have two opposing factors here. Let me just write these down. And then interest, and we'll call this interest percentage or rate, because it's typically how it's expressed. So really what we have here are two drivers. It's the cash flow of the business. So I'll also equal if I have a more cash generative business, if I make more money on an underlying basis outside of the interest of the business that we have to pay uh, for the purchase of the business, that's gonna increase my cash flows, lowers my debt when I exit, increases my returns. On the other hand, if my interest rate is higher, that lowers the cash flow that I generate as, as an owner of this business, that reduces my pay down and then ultimately reduces my returns. So these are the next two. Then at the end of an LBO, we go to sell. And as usual, we typically hold the multiple constant for conservatism purposes. And let's imagine that the business, the business's EBITDA grew to $13. We would sell at a multiple of EBITDA, in this case it would be 10 times 13 or $130. Now, um, we would then pay down our debt, which was $50 at the out, oh, wrong button there, which was $50 at the outset, and we paid it down to 30. So let's work through that. So we have 30 of debt left. 
And as the owner of the business, we get to collect the remainder, in this case, which would be $100. And once again, we've doubled our money. So what we can see here, now that we've laid this out, is the sale price also contributes. So in this scenario, if, if my EBITDA were higher, uh, I would generate a higher sale, sales price and ultimately more proceeds for myself. And the same thing with the multiple. If the multiple were higher, I would generate more proceeds and vice versa, by the way, if both were, were lower. So the last value driver here is going to be the sale price which is a function again of EBITDA and the uh, multiple at which we sell, or the multiple of EBITDA. So at a high level, we have these five drivers that, that create value in an LBO. The catch is if you dig a little deeper, it's really just three of them. So when we buy a business, and I'll walk through, I'll walk through why with each one, when we buy a business, um, we pay for that business and we have to pay based on a multiple EBITDA. And the multiple EBITDA, as I said, is really the core driver here because the EBITDA is not changing. So that's our first core driver. Um, then we get to debt. Debt can create value, but usually the level of debt you can raise is a function of what lenders are willing to provide and you can't really change that very much. So debt doesn't usually create a ton of incremental value or you can't toggle it very much usually to create a tremendous amount of incremental value. Then we get to the next core value driver, which is the business, whoop, wrong thing here, which is the business cash flows, which you can actually affect. So if we buy a business and we can make changes to it or do things to make it generate more cash, um, that can create value for us. Um, the interest though, is also just a function of what lenders are willing to lend based on the company that they're looking at. And that usually isn't something that's gonna create a tremendous amount of incremental value. Then we get to the sale price. When we sell a company um, or we model out the sale of a company for an LBO transaction, we typically hold the exit multiple constant uh, for conservatism purposes. We, assuming an expanding multiple is, uh, is just very hard to, it's something that's very hard to predict into the future. So people tend to assume that that stays flat. So really what's driving the um, value creation with the sale, sales price is our exit EBITDA. So to summarize, the way I would answer this in an interview is, the core value creation drivers in an LBO are the multiple we pay, which affects our purchase price, the cash flows the business generates on an underlying basis, which drives our pay down, and then the growth of EBITDA over the course of our ownership, which drives our exit sale price or exit value. And those are the core three drivers. Now, again, they can ask you about all the nuts and bolts of all the others, and we walk through these here, but those are the three primary value creation drivers, and those are the ones you probably want to start with in an interview. Hopefully this clarifies how you'd answer this question in an interview. We have a lot more of these coming. Please do hit the subscribe button down below and hope to see you soon.